we are going to create our own custom rows and grid system so we can more easily place our elements on our page. And the first thing that I want you to do is we're going to work with three of these lion images. So this button down here, we're going to go ahead and get rid of it. And then we're just going to copy this last image. And for now, go ahead and place it below. We are going to take these three lion images and we're going to wrap it in a row. And then we're going to put each image in its own column. And what we're doing is setting up a grid system in essence, all right? And this is going to allow us to easily position our elements. So let's go ahead and create some classes. So come down here to the bottom, and the first thing we're gonna do is create a row class. Now what this row class is going to do is it's going to kind of work like a container. And we're gonna create this row that is going to expand the entire width of the viewport, and it's going to allow us to place elements inside of it. So go ahead and create a class of row. And then inside of here, we're going to go ahead and give it a display of flex. All right, now we want our rows to stack on top of each other correctly, but we also want our rows to be able to flex with the width of the viewport as it changes sizes. And uh, to help with this, we're also going to add a width of 100%. We want to make sure that these rows always take up 100% width of the viewport. So we've got our uh, first class here. Now, as I talked about getting these rows to stack, we're actually going to use a, a new class that we haven't used before. So we're going to do a row, and then two colons, and then write the word after, and then we can add some properties in here. And what we're saying here is every time a row is created, we want something to ha happen after it. And I'll tell you what we want that to be. We want to give this a display of block. All right, so that means every new row that is created, we want these rows to be able to stack upon each other. And we also want to use a clear property. And what the clear property does is if there are any elements inside of this row that have float properties like a float right or left, we're going to clear that. And we're going to, the way we do that is by setting the value of both. All right, this way with every new row, we're clearing any floats and it doesn't get our content to get all messed up with any floats that might be inheriting from a parent above. And then also we want to make sure that these rows start fresh and we want to clear out the content. So we add the content property and we're just going to add an empty string here so that all of our content can reset here. So let's uh, now work with the columns. So we've essentially created the building block, right, to put all of our content in. And a column is now going to allow us to position our elements within these rows. So to do this, um, we're going to create a call class. And I'm going to do this of dash 1. All right. And this is going to have a width percentage. And I'm going to give it a width of 8.33%. Um, and then I'm going to close that off. Now, you're probably wondering, what the heck, Jason, like, what is this column one class that you're creating it has a width of 8.33%? What is that? Well, when we are working with columns and we're working with like a grid system that we want to create, um, we create grid systems in a total column width of 12. So uh, instead of writing this out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy the rest of these because this is going to be a pain to write out, but I'm going to let you uh, go ahead and do it. Take a minute and go ahead and finish writing the rest of these uh, column classes. And you can see up here, usually I open up uh, the brackets and put the uh, property and value inside. Since we're working with 12 columns, it's a little bit easier to just lay it out in one line. So take a moment and write that down. All right, so I assume you're done. All right, so let me tell you how this is working. So we've created 12 column classes, right? 1 through 12. Now, you can see that the widths are different based on the percentage on all of these, okay? And what we've done is we have a column width of 12 with a width of 100%, meaning that this class takes up 100% of the viewport, all right? And we've taken this 100% and we have divided it by 12. And that's where we get some of these funky percentages. But, you know, once we get to like a column width of 3, we have an even 25%, a column width of 6, 
is an even 50%, so that means it's going to take up half of the viewport. And then a column width of 9 is 75%, and then we have our full 100%. So let's go ahead and add a couple more classes, and then we'll really start diving in and working with these uh, rows and columns. So when we're working with rows, one thing that's really going to help us uh, make sure that all of our content is the same size is we want to add a box sizing property. And then we're going to go ahead and add some uh, brackets here. And then we're going to add a property called box sizing. And we want to do border box. Now what this does is in our page, we are going to have elements that have like uh, paddings and margin added to it, right? And sometimes when we have an element with padding and margin, uh, sometimes the element might display larger than it actually is. And what we're doing with this box sizing property is we are grabbing every single element. And with this property and value, what it does is it takes any of the padding and margin and it makes it part of the total dimension of that element. And what that's going to do is it's going to help keep all of our content to more realistic dimensions uh, that are going to fit nicely inside of our columns. All right. Now there is one more uh, class that I want to create here. And you're probably going, dude, Jason, this is nuts. Like we're creating stuff we haven't even used yet. But that is OK. Uh, this last class that we're going to create is simply for demonstration purposes so you can see how these columns uh, work on the browser. All right, It just gives us a visual of what's going on. So to do this, we're going to use an attribute selector. So we're going to use uh, some square brackets. And then you can go ahead and open that up. And then inside of here, what we want to do is we're going to say every single class. And we're going to grab all of them that is equal to a call with the dash. We want to go ahead and add a border that is, we'll do two pixels, a solid red. All right. And then we'll just add uh, some padding of like 15 pixels so that we can kind of see what's going on in here. And all we're doing is when we come into our div tags here and we add a, a column class of like 1 through 12, this is going to be able to select just the first part of this uh, and ignore the last number that's on here. And then it's going to give us our border and our padding. So that way we can use any column size that we want and we'll still get our border and our padding. So finally, we've created all these uh, fancy classes. Let's go ahead and put them to use. So we've got these three images here. And we want to wrap these images inside of a row. All right, so go ahead and let's create some space. And then this top div tag, we're going to do a div with a class of row. OK, open it up. We're going to. Uh, cut the last div tag, and we're going to place it right underneath our last image. All right, so now we've got all of our images uh, inside of a row. And now we're using uh, this row class. We're giving it a display of flex with 100%. And if we decide to build new rows, uh, they're going to be able to stack on top of each other. So now we don't want to just take these images and place them directly in a row. Rows should be used to build different sections of content on your web page. And then the actual elements and content should all be placed inside of a column. So let's create these div tags that are wrapping our image. And let's just give it a column class. So on this first one, we'll give it a class, a column width of 3. So that means this div right here, we're giving it a width of 25%. All right. And then in this one, why don't we go ahead and grab the uh, call class. Let's just do one of six. And then on this last one, remember, we're working with a grid system of 12. That means these columns inside of this row, they have to equal up to 12. So we've got nine. And that means we can create another uh, column class of three. So go ahead and let's create that. And if you try to use a column class that is bigger, your content is just kind of going to overflow uh, underneath it. It's, it's going to overlap, and it's going to look really dumb. So now we've got that. So let's launch the project and see what this looks like. All right, very cool. So you can see that we have three columns here. 
we've got a column width of three, six, and three. Now let's go ahead and build a second row with some different column classes. And while we're at it, we'll just go ahead and uh, align these images back to the center. All right, so let's come up to our image class really fast. And we are going to remove uh, the margin of 60. And we're going to give this a margin of auto, right? And then to get the margin of auto to work, we have to put this in a display of block. All right, and that was just a quick little side thing to do uh, just to get those images to center. Now what I want you to do is in our HTML, go ahead and copy uh, this row. And we're going to create a new row. And again, what we've done is with this row after class that we have down here, we have reset any uh, floats that may have been added to the right or left. We've got a row stacking on top of each other, and we're making sure that these rows start out with fresh content. All right, so in our new row down here, let's mix up these column widths again. Um, I'm going to give this one of two. We'll give this one a column class of seven. We're going to give this a column width of four. All right, and then since all of these columns are based on a percentage base. It's going to allow it to be very mobile uh, responsive because the columns are going to be able to collapse on a percentage base. And one thing that we can do to our columns to help them be mobile responsive is we can come to this uh, column class here and we can actually go ahead and add a float uh, left to it. And one of the reasons why I'm doing this is when we're building new columns, we want to make sure that they're stacking from left to right. Okay, It just helps all of the columns align properly. All right, so save that, and let's come back to the browser. Give it a, a quick refresh here. And you can see that we've got our column class of 2, 7, and 4. So that is it. That is how rows and columns work. We've gone ahead and we've uh, built our own custom rows uh, to be able to group content together and then also be able to reset so that our content can stack upon one another. And then we've actually gone and built our own grid system by creating uh, 12 classes, uh, column classes on a percentage base that actually will collapse with our browser as we shrink the viewport. So that is rows and columns. Let's move on.